he's been elected as the second governor after the outgoing uh, governor weekly for Paranya was served his two constitutional terms. I'm joined by the governor elect, the newest governor, we can say, because uh, some were elected <laughs> that they, they have already, you know, taken assumed office, but you are the newest, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, the Mombasa governor. So, somebody will want to know who is governor elect. Fernandez, FCPA Fernandez Barraza. Let me not leave it out. <laughs> FCPA Fernandez yeah. Barraza, yes. Uh, first and foremost, I want to um, appreciate uh, the people of Kakamega uh, for demonstrating political maturity uh, by electing me as the second governor of uh, this great county of Kakamega uh, against uh, the rampant bribery and water uh, bribery is going on. Uh, it is a political statement to uh, the entire nation. The Kakamega people were determined uh, to go for a leader who is mature and experienced. Uh, Fernandez Barraza, I'm actually a career uh, accountant, uh, having come from a very humble background. Um, my mother was, uh, uh, of course, a housewife. And my father was um, uh, a government officer working in the Ministry of Agriculture. My late father, that is uh, Nicholas Barraza. Uh, born in uh, Momiasi East at a village called Havondi mm. and uh, I went to school in a primary school down there uh, that is uh, Haunga Primary uh, where of course I was just living a simple life uh, I also used to um, take care of um, uh, uh, cows for my late uh, grandfather uh, Muzelu Kakwata so I'm just uh, a simple young man uh, from the village but uh, with a very serious uh, commitment to serve the people of Kakamega. Mm. Uh, after my primary school in Haunga, uh, that is uh, uh, Momiasi East, I also joined um, a high school in Aitiri and of course because I was very determined uh, that was my first time uh, to wear my first pair of shoes uh, in Form 1 and by the way before then um, we used to eat um, for lunch. We were just taking water and sugar cane. Oh. And that was in Haunga Primary. So lunch for me was a luxury when I was um, uh, a pupil or a student in, uh, in primary. I was so determined. Um, and of course, I had uh, a very strong affinity to numbers. So after high school, I, of course, went to Kenyatta University uh, to pursue uh, a degree. Uh, in uh, Abicom, my county. And then, of course, at the same time, I was doing uh, my CPA exams. So by the time I was graduating in 1997, that is in Kenyatta University, uh, which I graduated actually um, in the month of September. Uh, those are some of the moments you cannot forget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'm Abicom, stroke 92. Mm -hmm. uh, I was already a CPA by that time, uh, CPAK. Uh, so, I also did masters just to make sure that uh, <coughs> I've actually uh, made my educational background very strong. I did masters in business administration in Kenyatta University uh, between 2003 and um, uh, 2015, actually 2013-2015. So I graduated with um, a master's degree. Uh, and then, of course, after that, I'm also uh, pursuing my PhD, which uh, I'm, I'm done with um, all the coursework, so I'm just finishing on my project. Uh, so, Fernandez Barraza is a family man. I'm married to uh, one lovely wife, a Professor uh, Janet Barraza, who is a lecturer uh, at uh, Masinde Mulero University. And you are blessed with uh, uh, two son, four sons. Uh, two of them, of course, are adults. <coughs> uh, my first born is uh, Keith, he's in, he's in Nairobi University. My second born is called Thorn. He's now doing his form four uh, at uh, Alliance High School. And I have two young men who are still in primary. And for information, my kids, they just go to public schools. All um, are acting last born and the second last. They're just doing uh, the CBC. Uh, education at Momiasi Central Primary School. So you can and that clearly interests see... Me. That interests yes. me. Why? Yeah. Why? I, I remember when Thorne had uh, 
cleared his uh, KC, KCPE. Yeah, yes, we yes. covered him. He was uh, one of the best, uh, you yeah, know, performing. The top students. Uh, the to yeah. top students at uh, Central. Yeah. Why do you prefer public schools vis-a-vis -vis yeah. many of the, uh, you know, people that will mm. say uh, they are aff they, they live affluent life. Yeah. They always take their kids to, you know, some mm. affluent schools. Yeah, the reason why I preferred, uh, uh, which I still do right now, is I want these uh, kids to have a normal life because they interact a lot with uh, uh, those uh, kids from just humble families uh, so that when they grow up, they actually have an appreciation mm -hmm. of that simplicity uh, in life as opposed to having kids go to those high-profile schools and then after that, they don't now gel with the public. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, we are very uh, good examples. Uh, even uh, uh, my wife, the incoming first lady, mm -hmm. she's also come from a very humble family. And we believe uh, being role models, um, coming from humble families, just going to public schools, uh, we don't have to uh, take these guys to those high-profile schools. And for information, they're very comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, what, of course, we ensure is um, we provide everything. But the environment of being in a public uh, primary school <coughs> has worked very well. And Thorn, when he went, and again, of course, in high school, we prefer again uh, a public um, uh, school. Mm -hmm. That's why Thorn has had very easy time settling at Alliance High School. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, it is actually the true uh, uh, humility that we are trying to inculcate in these uh, uh, young boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, of course, uh, that is basically about your... Mm -hmm. Life later on, you got a job or why after you, yeah. Cleared? So, so what uh, was your first job and maybe first pay? <laughs> yeah, I, I was still talking about my career Sorry. life. Mm -hmm. Um, after doing my CPA, of course, um, my first job I was on very much demand in 1997 mm -hmm. because at the time I was the chairman uh, of Accounting Students Association of mm -hmm. Kunyata University. So, leadership started earlier, much earlier, like earlier. earlier, even in high school because mm -hmm. I was uh, the school captain. Mm -hmm. Uh, so my leadership uh, thing started earlier. Uh, immediately after high school, I had actually three job offers. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately after university, in 1997. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. at the time I was um, a CPAK, I was a BCom uh, graduate accounting. So I got a job in Kenya Airways. I got an offer in a PW, that time it was prior to house. Then I got a job as an audit assistant uh, in uh, Coopers and Librand. Those were audit firms. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to uh, Kenya Airways because I, I was already having affinity to working in a company that has a national interest, mm -hmm. public interest. Mm -hmm. So I was employed in Kenya Airways and my first salary was 8,000. That was a lot of money. Wow, during that time, yeah, 1997. 1997. Okay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I was just a young guy, uh, single, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but of course with a lot of family commitment because I, I came from a very humble family. Mm -hmm. Uh, so everybody so was looking up to you. Everybody was looking at me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had to support my siblings, of course, to finish their high school. Mm -hmm. And um, so there was no something. Mm -hmm. After so Kenya, how many people were depending on you? How many siblings did you have at yeah, the time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time I was having uh, uh, five siblings who were depending on me. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, uh, uh, two brothers, uh, three brothers and two sisters were depending on me. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's a step. Okay. But for ma 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 mothers of uh, ma mothers of education, of course, you go beyond even you are really yeah. a sibling because uh, uh, the work will depending on me. Mm. And then, of, of course, at the time also, uh, my dad has passed away uh, in 2005. So, so you were the first born? Yes, yes, yes I'm, I'm actually the, um, I'm the second born, but in terms of uh, responsibility, mm -hmm. I have a big sister, she's mm -hmm. called Beatrice, mm -hmm. the one I follow. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Western, when uh, your sisters get married, mm -hmm. you're, the yeah, you're the first Yeah, you're the first born. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> even as she looks at me as the first born. Yeah, sure. Because of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so after Kenya Airways, I went to, I now started growing in my career. Uh, I got a job in uh, East Africa Insurance as a uh, as chief accountant. That was um, in 1998, actually. Um, 99. So I worked in East Africa. Then I got another job um, in uh, Kenya Tea Development Agency. So that was after how long? Uh, that was um, in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in uh, KQ for basically one year. Mm -hmm. Then the offers were just flying all over the place. Mm -hmm. 
because I needed something for career growth, so I moved to uh, East Africa. Re. Mm -hmm. After East Africa, re, I went to uh, KTDA. Mm -hmm. There, I was uh, I was working as a, a treasury manager uh, for eight years, and I was managing billions of shillings. So I've started managing billions for a long time. Mm -hmm. Uh, after KTDA, uh, I left and went to uh, Ketrako. Mm -hmm. That is a Kenya electricity transmission company as the pioneer, uh, chief manager of finance, then finance director. Mm -hmm. That was in 2010. What What do you think propelled you to that level? I mean, from just the chief finance to... Yeah, actually what propelled me, um, before going to... Then I, I was very assertive um, <laughs> career-wise, and mm -hmm. of course everywhere I used to go, uh, I clearly bring out my best mm -hmm. and I was also looking at uh, career growth mm -hmm. because uh, in my life I said I need to be a CEO at some time uh, before I, I, I clock 50 mm -hmm. and, um, and for you to become a CEO you must first at least serve as a head of department mm -hmm. so that that can prepare you to being a CEO. So being a CEO was something that you're dreaming or, you know, like when you're growing up, you always mm. have some dreams, you know, was that your dream job, uh, being a CEO? Um, of course, when you're growing up in the village, you don't understand many things. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, uh, when I was growing up, by the way, I had some just crazy ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually uh, very excited with uh, just being a driver of a bus. Oh, so don't you wanted to be a bus driver? Bus driver. So that uh, was your dream? That was my dream because there was this bus called Mawingo, mm -hmm. those days. Mm -hmm. um, it was a very famous bus and anytime you could miss it, I definitely postponed your trip back the following day. Mm -hmm. So that guy was very, uh, was a very popular driver then, mm -hmm. the bus driver of Mawingo. Mm -hmm. those, those was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course, you know that time you have no clue about uh, careers. Mm -hmm. I started having a clue about careers now in high school because mm -hmm. that's when you meet now guys from various uh, uh, backgrounds mm -hmm. and then of course when I went to the university uh, now I started now getting more and more enlightened on careers mm -hmm. uh, and of course using now my strength in numbers it was very clear that from high school I was a guy geared towards anything analytical math and stuff like that uh, but uh, down there you know the careers my friend Mm -mm. You, you in the village you know you, you have don't no know, you have you no know clue whether you know nothing mm -hmm. um, but because of my strength then the issue of uh, accountancy became uh, clear okay. um, I was also the chairman of the uh, Institute of Certified Public Accountants mm -hmm. that's an elective position okay. that was in 2015 and 2017 so is it lobbying or you have it's an elective position oh, lobbying okay. uh, by then we had 20,000 uh, accountants. So you campaign? I campaigned seriously. In mm -hmm. fact, I'm on record mm -hmm. as having put a very serious uh, campaign machinery. So this is the gubernatorial one. It was just, you know, no, for th me, that one was laying foundation for this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so, so w w when I hear people say that Fernand is not a politician, mm -hmm. um, you don't talk much because I came in as an underdog in politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, having worked in public interest entities, especially uh, KTD was handling billions as a treasury manager, very successful, mm -hmm. making sure that bonuses are paid on time, making sure that we have systems of audits and stuff like that. Uh, it became very easy now when I applied for a job in Ketraco. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I never lobbied anybody. Uh, that's the level of professionalism I saw in the first board of Ketraco, mm -hmm. where you are just apply, uh, you're invited for interview, you, you are shortlisted, you know. Mm -hmm. And then you're giving your best and they're like, yeah, this is the guy we need. This is the guy we want. So, so, so when I went to Ketraco, I, I, I really um, did very well. And uh, when the Pioneer CEO was leaving in 2015, because mm -hmm. he had done six years, mm -hmm. the board had a uh, very easy time to pick one of the HODs to mm -hmm. act. To act. So I was picked. And that was August. That was, uh, that was August 2015. So uh, can I can can we say that August is your lucky month? By the way, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come to because think of you, it. you you appointed as an uh, acting MD yeah, August yeah, yeah. in uh, Ketraco. Yes, August, yes. you elected as a governor. Yes, yes, there. yes, yeah. Uh -huh. In fact, August. Um, come to think of it, is actually my lucky month. Okay, okay. Now yeah, you so, appointed so, at yeah. that time. So as so I was appointed, I acted for eight months. Mm -hmm. Uh, the job was advertised now proper in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, then I was given the first appointment in uh, in April as now substantive CEO mm -hmm. and MD. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, during my tenure, of course, I've done a lot. I've, uh, the first CEO to ensure that uh, the highest transmission uh, line is uh, completed. Mm -hmm. That was uh, Mombasa Nairobi transmission line 400 kV. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, during my tenure for eight years, six years, uh, I saw Ketrako increase their strength in the transmission grid, mm -hmm. uh, stabilizing power. Uh, of course, having reliability. Sometimes Kenyans assume that uh, when power is stable, especially in Nairobi and the other side, it's by default. No, it's actually by design. Mm -hmm. uh, as a lead, as, as the, the, the team leader of uh, Ketrako, uh, the first thing was to have a quick uh, appreciation of the industry, mm -hmm. uh, and then of course have a team of HODs who can support uh, the uh, the strategic plan approved by the board. So. I can say um, my strength as a leader. By the, that time again, in 2015, after I'd been appointed, uh, no, before the appointment in, uh, uh, in, in Ketrako as the acting CEO, I'd just been elected as the chairman of the institute. Oh, okay. 2015. Uh -huh. I was elected as the chairman, um, it was in May. Mm -hmm. Then I was substantively um, given that chairmanship in the month of June. So after two months, you have been here, you are national chair mm -hmm. of the Institute of Central Republic, which is now the official advisor of National Treasury. Mm -hmm. So I was the official advisor of the CS National Treasury on matters finance. Mm -hmm. And then in August, after two months, mm -hmm. I'm okay, being appointed wow. as the acting CEO. Hey, hey, your God, alikuwa kuwapo. Yeah, so it was, um, <laughs> I, had do, I had to do a lot of soul searching just mm -hmm. to see how I can balance. Mm -hmm. Because here, accountants have faith in you mm -hmm. as their leader. Mm -hmm. Of course, not a full-time job per se. Sure. And here you have now a full-time job as a CEO, mm -hmm. managing transition. Mm -hmm. In a, a big company. Big company mm -hmm. with a budget of over 50 billion per year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was something, but I thank God I made are very significant uh, achievements. Mm -hmm. And I'm on record as the longest um, serving CEO in the energy sector, of course, after 2010 constitution, mm -hmm. because I did my, uh, my six uh, years uh, without any issue. Mm -hmm. um, when I was working in um, Ketrak, of course, I now started planning for my future, because you know when you're on contract, mm -hmm and you have worked in parastatals, you have worked in KTDA, a very serious parastatal. Uh, you have worked in um, uh, Ketrako. So I started now planning for my exit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, so I registered uh, Baraza Foundation as uh, my special purpose vehicle mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to, to the public mm -hmm. uh, in terms of just supporting some socioeconomic activities. Mm -hmm. And again, for me, uh, that Baraza Foundation was uh, a very good opportunity for people to know who is this Baraza. Mm -hmm. So that uh, when you come now to ask for their support, mm -hmm. you don't come in as a stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, so my interest um, in just rich, first of all, serving the people, mm -hmm. uh, started by um, having this offshore, mm -hmm. which we've done very well, uh, even as we speak right now. Uh, people know more about Baraza Foundation, so I had a lot of time mm -hmm or a, a challenge of trying now to convince people to vote for Fernando mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a voting for, because for them, they wanted to vote for Barada Foundation. Mm -hmm. so, so, so when I left Ketrako, uh, that is uh, early this year, of course, as per the elections guidelines, we're supposed to, uh, to resign six months to elections. So I resigned on 31st of uh, January. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the foundation was already um, uh, three years down the line serving people. But at that time, yeah. when you decided to join politics, <coughs> were you like, was it your dream job? Did you like say, when you're growing up, it is something that no, you really it, wanted to join? In fact, when I was growing up, uh, even at the time I was appointed as the CEO, mm -hmm. I didn't have any ambition of being a politician. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always good to have uh, dreams all dreams are valid mm -hmm. and you dream anytime <laughs> yeah Whatever so, mm -hmm. so 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 my focus really um i started working on my exit strategy mm -hmm. um when i got the second term mm -hmm. 
uh, in Ketrako as the CEO. Uh, because after successfully delivering on my mandate on the first term, uh, which ended in 2019, uh, as a strategic thinker, you start, you start working mm -hmm. on your exit strategy. Sure. Uh, so at that time is when I registered the Baraza Foundation mm -hmm. as my special purpose vehicle. What are some of the things that you really wanted to, you know, uh, do with the with the foundation? Yeah, the one of the things which, of course, I wanted to do, which I successfully did, is to support INS socioeconomic programs for the youth and women. Mm -hmm. And uh, one clear project which I successfully did was uh, just making sure that we empower uh, these young guys on uh, some opportunities to generate income. Mm -hmm. I bought for them 500 motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And uh, those motorcycles, of course, they were very strategic because I was the one doing the servicing. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the riders were doing just to collect some money and put in a pool to make sure that it services them. Mm -hmm. But largely, most of the money they were using to support their families. Mm -hmm. And I have some very good uh, videos which I can share with you just to see how this uh, motorcycle uh, thing has really transformed the lives of uh, our young men and yeah, the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, for women, of course, we went into uh, a lot of programs uh, supporting maternal health care, mm -hmm. uh, supporting doing awareness on cancer, uh, breast cancer, tumor cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, we also had programs of uh, anti chica campaign, mm -hmm. uh, which again we did very well across the county. Mm -hmm. uh, we also started programs of, um, like we had some floods in 2011. Yeah. And most of the households, uh, 2021 rather, mm -hmm. uh, most households were affected mm -hmm. and uh, the foundation came in very handy mm -hmm. uh, to build houses, uh, some permanent houses for the vulnerable, mostly mm -hmm. uh, widows. Mm -hmm. uh, we constructed over 100 houses. Um, we that had across the county. Across the county. Mm -hmm. uh, we had medical camps um, again across the country, in the, the, the county. county. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also had programs on um, just, just just supplying wheelchairs to the um, to the PWDs and and, and um, uh, crutches. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that across the county. So the Baraza Foundation thing was uh, was actually a, a very special uh, purpose vehicle for me, mm -hmm. just to make sure that people appreciate who Baraza is. And I don't intend to uh, stop doing that. Mm -hmm. I know maybe that could be the next question. Mm, yeah, of course. <laughs> are, we, are we stopping there or now we... But, but, but again, of course, uh, many of the things that you've done uh, at Beraza Foundation, probably you are limited in terms of resources because it was mm. a family venture. Mm. So are we now, uh, are you going to do this? Are you going to expand this? What you've mm. been doing at Beraza Foundation now that you've been given mm. an opportunity as uh, to, mm. to serve as Kagamega governor? Mm. Yeah, one thing I want to say here is um, Brother Foundation will continue because it has its own secretariat. We have employees there. And some of the socioeconomic programs, uh, once we get supporters to, of course, um, support the activities, uh, we have no problem. But the dream is still there to reach out mm -hmm. uh, to the households down there. And largely, um, uh, the, the, the incoming first lady will, of course, take charge. Mm -hmm. I know some of her uh, programs to support the, the girl the child, child. Mm -hmm. uh, will also be done through the foundation. Mm -hmm. So it, it just blends well with our agenda mm -hmm. on supporting the girl child and women empowerment. Mm -hmm. so, so it will be a different entity altogether? It will be a different entity altogether. It is a different entity. And what we want is uh, for it to be an entity, even in the, in the foreseeable future, so that it's not tied to the political okay. activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've been elected as a governor of um, Kakamega County. Mm -hmm. I know campaigns have been so <laughs> hectic, mm -hmm. but here we are, you have been elected. Mm -hmm. What is your view on uh, the low voter turnout in the exercise? Uh, for me, the low voter turnout First and foremost, maybe we need to start from the postponement of the elections on the 9th. Mm -hmm. um, in my view, it was well designed uh, to frustrate uh, voters of Kakamega County to come out in large numbers and vote for Raila Molodinka. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the counties and some of the affected areas, all of them were as mere strongholds. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why you see from the outcome of 29th, uh, all of them actually were as Mio uh, winners. So for me, it was well designed by IBC, led by one of Fulachi Bukati, to frustrate voters of Kakamega, Mombasa, and the likes to, of course, now uh, bring out the issue of voter apathy. So we had a very difficult time. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing is, after postponing, we have given a date of 23rd. We went around campaigning. And unfortunately, again, one of the party postpones elections indefinitely. Uh, so for me, I had to come out very strongly and condemn that, of course, moving to court, uh, basically to force this guy to give us a date or the, tech, uh, the, the court process gives us a date. And in our prayers, we actually uh, we were praying for elections on the before 30th of uh, August, mm -hmm. which again for me, um, it worked well because Kakamega people uh, had a right to elect a governor because it was very frustrating uh, when you see other counties, governors are being sworn in, mm -hmm. but Kakamega and Mombasa, uh, it's in limbo. So it, it was quite trying, mm -hmm. but I want to appreciate the Kakamega people for being patient at least as their leader, I made sure that they get a right of electing their second governor, whom I want to also appreciate their commitment, their loyalty, and of course the support which um, I got have been declared as the winner. Mm -hmm. And for me, is a demonstration of mature politics, uh, politics that uh, is not influenced by the level of handouts that people were giving, because my opponent, the closest opponent, they were giving people sugar, they were giving people 500 shillings before they vote. So it was just obvious and rampant voter bribery, which the people of Kakamega had already made a decision. They overlooked that. They overlooked that. Walitaka kiongozi bora. Sio bora kiongozi. Okay. Yeah. So the postponement led to voter apathy? So the postponement led to voter apathy because when, when you're going around, uh, this was a typical by election. You remember mobilizing. Mm -hmm. As one candidate was very difficult, mm -hmm. so we had to, and most of the other fellows had traveled back to uh, to Nairobi and other cities, what mm -hmm. come to vote on the night, so they were very dejected, mm -hmm. and that for me brought out the voter apathy, mm -hmm. which of course Ofola Chepkat succeeded in uh, suppressing the numbers for Ayla Malodinga. Mm -hmm. I mean that's why we're in Supreme Court, mm -hmm. yeah, because had had Mombasa See. and Kakamega voted, I can assure you, mm -hmm. that small gap was just going to be wiped away because. With voter turnout of 78% mm -hmm. out of the numbers, mm -hmm. I can assure you, Raila could have gotten not less than 600,000 votes. Mm -hmm. But uh, so what I'm saying is the voter turnout and uh, the plan by IBC to frustrate voters not participating in electing their governor worked in favor of William Ruto. So you ended up spending also a lot, especially when yeah. it comes to, you know, the postponement after postponement. We, we ended up spending uh, three times because like uh, on the 9th, I'd already paid my agents, mm -hmm. of course, we were party agents. So and then on 23rd election uh, preparation, I'd gone overdrive, targeting 23rd. Uh, in terms of logistics, of course, vehicles were moving up and down. So I intend to still pursue IBC to sue them for costs because these costs were just well designed by IBS to frustrate us so that we give up and frustrate our strongholds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. ah, okay. Um, right now you've been elected as a second governor of Kakamega County. What yeah. are your plans for Kakamega? Your immediate, I mean some of the immediate things that you're planning to do? Yeah, first I want to invest a lot into uh, healthcare uh, because we need a uh, population. Uh, that is healthy. Uh, medical services is, is crucial. And for me, I intend to have at least level four hospitals in all the 12 sub counties, mm. well equipped uh, with the nurses because that's a developed function. I also intend to invest a lot in agriculture uh, because uh, Kakamega, uh, we have a challenge of food security. I know we have Agabukura Agricultural uh, Training College. Uh, which is a sleeping giant because we have not utilized uh, or optimized the capacity of Bukura Agricultural in College. Mm -hmm. I intend to bring on board uh, a lot of uh, 
a partnership with the Wabukura Agricultural College mm -hmm. and Masinde Muliro University to do some bit of research on value addition. Those are some of the things which I intend to uh, give priority. And of course, in terms of just making sure that uh, we have um, sufficient infrastructure uh, in all the 60 wards, I intend to bring uh, a motion to the county assembly uh, to have the ward development fund so that MCAs are empowered to at least do some of the infrastructure projects mm -hmm. like at the water, level. at the water level, water, electricity, mm -hmm. and uh, issues like, uh, of course, other infrastructure projects like roads. Mm -hmm. That one I will want to achieve it through the uh, members of the county assembly. And for me, if we do that and focus more on creating an environment uh, for investment opportunities mm -hmm. so that we can create jobs for the youth, uh, so that we can have investors come around. Mm -hmm. Of course, I intend to quickly establish the special economic zones. Mm -hmm. There's already some mapping that was done uh, in order to attract investors to come around here. Mm -hmm. uh, in order for us, of course, to now give an opportunity to the youth for employment. So there are quite a number of things that uh, I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. We want to make our position in Kakamega County as an investment hub in the Western region. <laughs> Ah, okay. Uh, of course, elections zimekamilika. You've been declared as a governor yeah. elect. Yeah. What do you, uh, because among among uh, the people who are eyeing for the seat, your mm. seven uh, seven or, yeah. uh, candidates, mm -hmm. we had one uh, one, um, uh, one the one who was elected mm -hmm. a winner, yeah. the others are losers. Mm -hmm. What is your message to them? Uh, my message to them uh, first, um, I want to appreciate them for being what they competed us. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially one Cleophas Malala because he really came out very strongly uh, despite of course um, uh, the commitment uh, of uh, the voters to elect a politician uh, who was experienced a manager for that matter my message to my competitors is uh, I'm happy uh, they, they have considered defeats uh, so let's come back and work for the people of Kakamega because we need to have consultative leadership. Mm. Uh, but uh, largely, I also want him to apologize to Kagamega people for causing violence. There's a lot of violence. We reported quite a number. Right now, we have so many uh, of our supporters in hospital. Uh, we are paying bills uh, uh, to sort out their medical bills. Uh, so Cleophas Malala should come out and apologize to Kagamega people for causing violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe my six-point agenda for Kagamega people is it cuts across. Which are? Uh, of course, I've talked about uh, matters healthcare. Mm -hmm. I've talked about uh, affordable um, issues around food security. Mm -hmm. I've talked about good governance where we have world funds. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked about youth empowerment uh, where we have, of course, a program mm -hmm. of having some uh, facilities for the youth sure. uh, just to make sure that um, in all sub counties we, we nurture talent. Uh, for the youth, we have issues around water and sanitation that is crucial because you also need to address this, the soft issues for, uh, for, for, for the Wanainchi. Mm. And then of course not forgetting infrastructure. So for me, when I, when I implement those uh, six uh, agenda items, mm -hmm. I don't need any uh, support whatsoever in terms of an agenda from Cleophas. Mm -hmm. What is to come out of course, I know is very strong in youth issues. Uh, we can see the value adds in implementing our agenda on youth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you planning uh, to reorganize the government as a, if at all, you just take immediately in the other office? Yeah, of course. The first thing to, uh, that I'll do mm -hmm. um, is to reorganize the budget so that I can incorporate my manifesto. Because there are some things which need to hit the ground running. Sure. And I know right now we have an operational budget that was approved mm -hmm. um, by the Account Assembly uh, for this financial year. So as an accountant, uh, I know that uh, I need to quickly have a supplemental budget tabled uh, before the Account Assembly mm -hmm. uh, so that I can plug in some of the uh, uh, important uh, manifesto issues mm -hmm. around infrastructure and development. Uh, then, of course, um, I'll also need to reorganize my, my cabinet. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot inherit the cabinet from my predecessor. 
uh, in terms of uh, just having uh, the account executive uh, members, CECs, and also just looking at some of the areas that we can definitely have uh, some new faces. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the administrative things which I'm, I'm looking at. Mm -hmm. uh, in the next 100 days mm -hmm. yeah maybe one thing that i i re, it skipped my mind but i really wanted to know you know mm -hmm. uh, i i really don't want to go because on a but mm -hmm. what, what what do you think propelled you to you know uh, to be elected as the governor what led uh, people of kakamega put trust in you and say you are the person what did you do different from others yeah of course what i did first is for people to appreciate and choose between somebody they can trust, mm -hmm. somebody who has demonstrated mature leadership, somebody who can bring stability, mm -hmm. because it's very important mm -hmm. uh, in the account. Mm -hmm. And my messaging was very specific addressing those issues, mm -hmm. because based on the competition, the competitors I had, mm -hmm. it was very clear now to come up with a message that is very consistent and assuring the people of Kakamega of stability. Mm -hmm. Not somebody will come and start from zero. That's what my competitors we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And in this case, um, it was very easy for Kakamega people to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't want an individual to come in mm -hmm. and just wash away the foundation which has been uh, put forward by the outgoing governor. Sure. Uh, I'm not saying I'll be his project, but it's a uh, I'll of course improve on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We must appreciate it's done um, fairly well. Uh, so that stability for me was very important, which from our research, because I had um, uh, 12 researchers in the 12 sub-counties, mm -hmm. I'm just now telling my strategies, who mm -hmm. are telling us <laughs> what are the key issues that we need to address. Mm -hmm. So based on the research from the 12 sub-counties or constituencies, mm -hmm. our messaging was very targeted. And I was coming in as somebody who is experienced, somebody structured, mm -hmm. uh, somebody is going to at least bring that face of stability, maturity. Somebody is, who is tested because this is uh, a job that requires a lot of um, uh, 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 experience in matters mm -hmm. public finance. Mm -hmm. Because you also don't want to have a governor who is, who is very green on those matters. Sure. So for me, my strength resonated very well with what people wanted mm -hmm. and that's why irrespective of the amount of money that was available mm -hmm. Kagamega people had a very clear choice not about money but somebody who can deliver services based on his experience in the past mm -hmm. and that's why I was a very clear uh, winner in this thing the umbrella whole aspect has been something that has been bedeviling, especially matters politics in Kakamega yeah, yeah, County. Yeah. Mm. So do you think people have grown from that? People democratically, they have, they really know what they want in terms of leadership? Yeah, to, to, to a large extent, yes. And one thing I can assure you, the 150-something votes, that 150-something thousand votes which Glove has got, it was largely because of the money he gave. Mm -hmm. Not because people didn't, uh, not because people wanted him. Mm -hmm. That one I can tell you for a fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay. So Samia, I want you to look kwa hiyo kwa camera. Alafu wewe uambie watu. They really want to know your personal attributes and who, who is this governor that they have elected for, you know, as their second governor in Kakamega County. Talk to people of Kakamega. Um, I want to assure the people of Kakamega that uh, you didn't make a mistake in electing FCP Fernandez Baraza as your second governor. I will ensure that every corner, all the 60 wards, get equal opportunities for development uh, through my Mendelena Osawa slogan. I will ensure that all opportunities which are available for appointments are spread across the board. Uh, I will ensure that we have stability in the county. I want to position Kakamega County as the next investment frontier in order to attract investors to come here and create employment opportunities for our residents. So Kakamega people, thank you very much for your overwhelming support electing me as your second governor. And I want to assure you that I'm ready to hit the road running. Thank you.
Yes, so thank you so much. So that has been the second governor, or the governor-elect here in Kakamega County, FCPA, uh, Fernandez Baraza. We've had FCPA, uh, weekly for Paranya, who has served his two constitutional terms, and then uh, we have FCPA, Fernandez Baraza, taking the mantle to serve uh, his five years tenure here in Kakamega County. And if at all, all goes well, he will be also serving another five years, two terms, as, yes, yes. as the other FCPA, weekly for Paranya. So we pray for him that, of course, he'll be able to serve the people of Kakamega County and of course with all that he has said he's gonna do we hope it will be achieved it's been an interview with uh, FCPA uh, incoming governor Fernandez Barraza taking over from uh, Wycliffe Oparanya thank you so much see you next time